everybody, Mike from PWInsiderElite.com, and we are here with Devin Storm, a.k.a. Crowbar. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, Mike. What's up? Um, well, you know what? Extreme Rising, uh, you've kind of been a force from the first show on. Uh, the match with Jerry Lynn kind of stole the show in a lot of ways saved the first show. Uh, you've been an important part of the company since. Uh, some people said it's kind of like a resurgence for you. Do you think that's kind of fair? Because you've been working fairly regularly, although you, you kind of choose where you're going to work. Yeah, I say it's it's absolutely a resurgence right now. Uh, I was in a few Indies here and there, uh, just trying to stay in shape and just kind of feed my passion I have for pro wrestling, but it's lots of small crowds, quiet crowds, crowds that's not really into what's going on. Uh, I showed up here for Extreme Reunion, very pleasantly surprised. We uh, had a huge crowd outside chanting before the show. They were really into what was going on, and they carried that energy into the show. And when you have an audience like that, it just uh, like, like, like sounds corny. Some people might want to call me Mark or call me whatever. Like it, like it, it doesn't matter. I'm happy. Uh, it just makes it more fun. Uh, it really drives you to want to do more, to give more, and to have that interaction back and forth with the people. Uh, this is a unique audience uh, that I have. I haven't felt that kind of energy since way back when, when I was in the original ECW, although job guy way back then, you still could appreciate that uh, rabid audience and the appreciation for hard work and uh, the giving and getting and the transfer of energy between you and the crowd. So it uh, this crowd's very lively and it just pushes you, drives you to do more. Right. You know, it's funny, back in the day, the, the knock on you backstage was you didn't pay enough respect to the business. You always had your nose in a book. You weren't out partying with everybody. Like, now you fast forward a bunch of years, and you're still working on a regular basis. You're still in good shape. You're still having good matches. You've got a full-time business that you run. You know, so what do you say to the people that were, like, in the back and kind of saying, oh, you don't respect the business, you're not paying attention, you don't care about the business? Uh, proof is in the pudding. Uh... At, at, at the time, it's something called delayed gratification. I, I was emerged in pro wrestling. I was enjoying being in pro wrestling. And at that time, the common misconception was this kid doesn't respect the business. He's reading his books or this kid doesn't appreciate or love the business. And I would say, fast forward 10 years later, 12 years later, whatever it is, um, I, I can pretty much say no one loves this business more than me. I've created a situation, a very unique situation. I don't need to be here. I absolutely don't need to be here. It's not a money thing. Uh, look down on me, call me Mark, call whatever you want. I don't need to be here. I choose to be here because I love going out there and performing. And now I can do it under my terms. Uh, if if there's a wacky promoter out there that wants to talk down to me or just give me any, any, any kind of crap, I just don't work for them. I enjoy working for this group, uh, the management here has always been great great to me. Uh, they allow me a lot of input on my matches, what I want to do, what I'm going to do, and the fan base here is awesome. So I'm enjoying the ride, I hope it continues, and uh, the thing is this is it's a situation I created for myself, and I took a lot of knocks for it took a lot of put-downs, got a lot of heat for it, uh, but fast forward now to 2012, 2013, I'm, I have a great situation and I'm happy, so whatever your, your opinion is, it doesn't matter. What's your favorite Dennis Carluzzo story? Uh, can I curse on your site or no? Sure. Or, or, I'll, or I'll, I'll paraphrase. It'll be on YouTube, so you can say whatever you want. Okay, no, then I don't, because I do run a, a business, so I have to be somewhat... Uh, Political? <laughs> yes, I'll be somewhat political because I don't want to come off as a foul mouth. Uh, we were doing a show for some church organization or CYO, and it had a big crowd out there, so we're all expecting to get paid that night. Dennis Caruso comes back and says, Guys, I can't pay you. You would never believe it. The priests f me on this one. The priests f me. That's what I think. You can't make that up. You can't get paid. And if you knew the way he spoke and the way he, like, just... He had, he had that Sopranos, infl yeah, his Sopranos inflection. Yeah, the delivery was great, and to this day, I can still hear him saying that, and it's hysterical. And you can't even be mad. Even at the time, you couldn't be mad because it was so ridiculous. Uh, and it's still a great story now, and it still makes me laugh. Right. I know you're like the world's biggest Star Wars fan. Uh, thoughts on Disney owning Lucasfilm and uh, doing the new movies? I am thrilled. 
Uh, first and foremost, I'm thrilled that this huge company purchased Star Wars and huge George Lucas fan, but unfortunately George didn't want to continue this Star Wars legacy. And even during my time in WCW, uh, I spent a lot of time on the planes in my hotel room at night. Uh, guys would go out and tear it up. I would eat something. I would, I would go back to my room and I would read a Star Wars novel. Very um, the expanded I'm, universe. I'm a wild man. I, I would go back to my room and read, and, and I would go through two, three novels a week. And the, the bottom line is, I could look forward to a new Star Wars movie every two or three years, whatever it is, until the day I die. It's, it's, it's just add a whole new thing to my whole existence on this planet. Gives you a new reason to yes. live. Uh, I'm a huge fan. My wife's a huge fan. My kids love it. Uh, the Ford family are complete geeks. We tape the Clone Wars TV show and watch, you know, if sometimes I'll have a set where it's four, uh, four episode thing. So we'll wait till all four run it and we'll watch them as a complete series as a family. Uh, like I said, Ford's complete geeks. We are thrilled by Disney's acquisition of George Lucas's uh, Star Wars. And uh, like I said, looking forward to all the stories that come after Jedi, maybe some that came before the original trilogy and uh, the possibilities are endless. Uh, we just got back from Disney. We were there for Christmas. It was our first time there. Uh, very, very long. My first time there since I was in eighth grade and I was probably on the Star Tours ride nine times, and on two mornings, I, the park gates opened up, and I sprinted to uh, the little building in the middle there to sign my kids up to duel with Darth Vader and Darth Maul at the Jedi Academy. So you, you saw this wacky guy with long hair sprinting down the middle of this Disney Hollywood Studios, running to this building, just to sign my kids up. and. Uh, they each got to fight Maul once and Darth Vader once, and it was just an awesome experience. The only bad part is they, the cutoff was 12 years old, so I couldn't do it. Nah, and you would have. Absolutely. Might have hit him with an Asai Moon song. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for your time, and uh, I'm sure we'll get you back on here again, and uh, may the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. Everybody have a good New Year.